What's going on guys? Aaron here with AV Astronomy. I know it's been a while since I've last posted a video, but I promise you it's been worth it. I have been working on a project here with M81 and M82 for the past two months. It started back in March. I got a, about four or five days in in March and another four more days in in April, totaling 33 hours, 28 hours of color data with my one-shot color camera and five hours of HA. Now the goal here was to put together something that was more of like a deep field image of M81, M82. So some of you may not be aware that there's actually a great deal of what's called integrated flux nebula that surrounds M81 and M82, as well as some other areas in that region. The tricky part is capturing it on camera. Generally, you wanna be in a dark site location to capture this kind of data because it's so faint light pollution drowns it out pretty quickly and it becomes an issue of battling the old SNR signal to noise ratio battle. But I have learned that with enough data, enough integration time, you can pull it out. Now, 33 hours may seem like a lot, but you'll see here in a minute just how much I was able to pull out. It's not as near as much as I was expecting, but it does go to show that Total integration time does matter, especially with targets like these where you're trying to capture faint detail. This is Aaron and you're watching AV Astronomy. guys let's go over exactly what I did to process this image if you've seen some of my other earlier videos this procedure is gonna look pretty familiar to you especially the one with M42 Orion and blending two images together well but we'll get into that later let's get started all right so we have our stack here of 28 hours worth of color data and business as usual I'm gonna duplicate the layer pressing control J and go ahead and start doing some initial stretches on this image. So if I pr press Control M, let's do a 30. Okay, and you know me, I like to flatten out after I've done an adjustment. If I like what I've seen, if I don't, I leave it unflattened. You can already start to see some stacking artifacts. Let's go into levels. Bring that slider over just a tad. All right, let's do another stretch. Control M. And let's flatten that out. And let's go ahead and crop out some of the area that I know we're not gonna need anyway. So let's do that there, some of these edges a little bit. Here we go. All right, let's flatten that. Let's do a levels adjustment. Okay, now you can already see the gradient. I find the tools in Photoshop, like gradient exterminator and sometimes manual adjustment with gradients does the trick. So here we go. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to select the galaxies. And oop, let's try that again. We're going to select M81. Hold down shift when you make your additional selection. Otherwise, it'll just erase it. There we go. We're going to select inverse. And then go to filter, RC Astro, gradient exterminator. Boom, gradient's gone. So deselect. Look at that. Nice even field now. Let's flatten that out. 
Control J. Now let's do a color boost after, well actually let's go ahead and pull out this green, okay? The way I like to do that, you know how I roll with this, is I do filter, blur, average. Click the bottom layer, go to image, apply image, subtract, and I have the offset set to 25 and look boom it's gone now there's a little bit of a red shift it looks like maybe so we're gonna check the channels here go to control L for levels and let's check each channel make sure they're aligned so let's align them each manually red right there green right there just about and blue right about there there we go okay so we've done our levels adjustment flatten it out <clears throat> and before we do another stretch let's try and there's some star color here we want to preserve so let's select color range we're gonna to go to highlights and let's adjust this mask we want most of the stars and some of the galaxy too here we go let's do that Create a mask. Let's take a look at that mask. Looks good to me. Okay. Now, control U for color adjustment and just slide up that slider until you see a nice little boost in color. You don't want to go crazy, otherwise you get something like that, but you do want a solid boost because this stretching of the data pulls away from the color, so we need to fix that. Let's go with, let's go with 70. I think 70 is a good number. There we go. All right. Change that to a color layer. And go down to the background layer. Control M. I get a lot of people ask me why I do this. I've been doing this for so long this way. <laughs> because it's how I was taught. I, I couldn't tell exactly why I do this. But it's just part of the procedure. So I do it. And it seems to work good. All right. Let's flatten that out. Control J. And let's do another stretch. Control M. Arc sign 10 this time. There we go. Look at that detail just pop, just like that. All right, let's flatten that out. And let's take a look. Let's duplicate layer at level, see where we're at. Is there any more room for stretching? And if the channels are aligned, looks pretty good so far. Looks pretty good. All right. Now, I still feel like there's a little more stretching that can be done. So before we move on to putting the HA into this picture, let's go ahead and do that. Let's first take, let's see if we can bring out any more detail using camera raw filter. This is another mode I like to use in Photoshop. Okay. I don't mess with a lot of these sliders too much because I, I just think they're too strong. Like contrast, even, I just don't like what it does very much. We can just a little bit, perhaps, but you lose some of that faint detail there. You see that? But you can play around with these sliders to your liking, but clarity is a big one. I like clarity. It does seem to punch out the hidden detail in nebulas and in faint. Uh, detail around galaxies very nicely. Look at this. See that? Definitely a vibrance boost and just a little bit of a saturation boost. Not too much. Just a little. We're starting to you see that color being restored in the stars. Okay. Let's flatten that out. I like that. I like what we're seeing so far. Let's look at there we go. I just went to levels. I think we can do one more stretch, guys. One more stretch. Let's see. Let's see what happens. A 10 might be too much still, but... Now you can really start to see the stacking artifacts after I stretch it this far. Uh, this is where calibration frames may help. I'm not sure, though, because this was done over like 9 or 10 different nights. The camera was not always in the exact same angle every time. 
and throw in the Meridian flips. It's I don't think you can calibrate this out. If you guys know a way to do that, please let me know in the comment section. But this stuff here, I don't think that you can calibrate that out. From what I understand, when you're using like darks and flats and whatnot, they have to be. It needs to be in the same position. The camera oriented oriented in the telescope in the same position. So, anywho, we're gonna work with this. And we're just gonna crop that out. Let's see what happens here. That seems like maybe a little bit of an overstretch, but we can lower the opacity of that stretch a bit. Maybe drop it to about 90%. Let's do that, and then let's just crop out the rest of the junk. The stacking artifacts and uneven field illumination and stuff from... I don't want us to crop that out, though. There we go. Okay. Flatten... let's see if we can use gradient exterminator one more time to even this field out a little bit so same thing as before select that and hold down shift while making your additional selections select inverse and I do have this feathered at 20 pixels so keep that in mind RC Astro gradient and medium medium pretty much is my go-to settings on this there's been a couple times I've changed that but medium medium seems to work really well fingers crossed it actually did a really good job sweet okay so that's helped even that out a good bit more let's flatten that out control J and let's look at levels one more time let's just creep this over just a tad it looks a... there there we go and guys, that's about all I did for the color data right there. Um, let's zoom in. You can see that the data is very clean. I mean, I didn't have to apply any noise reduction on this at all. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that I've stacked over 400 frames. So it wasn't really necessary. Our next step is going to be stretching the, um, is stretching the HA data which really brought out the HA in these galaxies. And then I'll show you how I mask that in. And pretty much same process as before. So we'll go ahead and speed through this section. When I get done stretching this one, I'll slow it back down so I can show you guys how I mask this layer back in with the color layer. All right, guys, so there we go. There it is, stretched out. That's the HA data. A lot of nice reds coming through here. Now, let's mask this into the other image. And I'm going to show you just how I did that. So what we're going to do is go back to this image here. Okay, let's separate these. And, man, there's still some... Let's see, we can probably do another crop. Yeah, let's do that. Let's crop this up to about right there. And... Man, about right there. There. Let's see if that helps. Okay. What we want to do is paste this one on top of this one here. Okay? But before we do that... Oop, I didn't finish that part. Let's flatten this out. Oh, what did I just do? Oh, for goodness sake, what did I do? Okay, there we go. That was weird. <laughs> okay. Did I flatten that? Alright. 
I did. Okay, let's go to this image here. Okay. And press Control A, Control C. Click on this image here. Make sure you're on this layer right here, and press Control B. Paste it right on top. So now what you're going to do, oop, let's check the alignment of that paste. See how it did. So if you draw back the opacity, I hope my audio is still recording. Yeah. If you move the opacity slider over, you can see where you need to make adjustment. Okay, and it's definitely off. So let's adjust that layer. Control T to free transform. Zoom in a bit. Let's see, it needs to come down and over, and it looks like we gotta spin it a little bit. Yep. Looks like we gotta spin it this way. Almost. Not too much. And this may take a little playing around with to get it right. Smaller, make a little, let's see here. Spin it this way some. Still a little off, we're still a little blurry here. This is a tricky part of this, <laughs> it takes some time if your image scale is not exactly the same, an easy way to avoid this is when you're editing, don't crop at all like I did earlier, and it would should match up a lot better. Okay, so now that we've got that perfectly aligned, press Enter. Boom. Make a layer mask right here. And then we're going to copy and paste this bottom layer. Same thing, Control-A, Control-C, alternate left click, Control-V. And that's going to be your mask. Come back here, boom, and now we can control how much of that HA gets masked in there or not. All right, I have the opacity slider all the way up, and look at the red punching through there, it's looking good. Here's what I'm gonna do though. I'm gonna pull up Control M, and if you drag this slider down, it will even put in more of that HA. You can get a little crazy with it, but Let's let's do this right about There we go. I think that's pretty good there. Here's so here's before. This is without the HA data added. Here's after. Look at that. Look at the color punch in M81 and in M82. Nice. Now, to avoid any messing the stars up, let's go back to this mask here, and let's actually black out everything that isn't the galaxies, because that's really all we're looking to add data to, is the galaxy. So let's black that out. We don't want to mess with any of that. Okay, now let's look at this. There we go. I was noticing earlier these stars over here were getting a little jacked up from that, but look at the difference. Boom. Okay, that should help there. Let's go back. Much better. There we go. And there's the before, after. Look at that. Awesome. All right, I'm good with that. Let's flatten that out. And guys, that's really, that's it. That's about it. I probably, I did a couple more color adjustments and masks with the stars to kind of bring out their color a little bit more, but this is it. I hope you uh, enjoyed it. I'm going to put the final image up here in just a moment and, con and contrast it to my first attempt at this back in 2019. Just to show you how much of a difference dedication, imaging time, processing, how much my improvement in those areas has made a difference in my imaging. So as always, guys, if you're ever interested in the gear I use or recommend, you know, I've got the links in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching. God bless. And until next time, clear skies. Take care.